Hello, it's Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. I've got something very new today. It's a new pen, new fountain pen to the market. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's not been reviewed anywhere else on YouTube as of yet. Um, and I haven't seen any other reviews online. Um, in fact, there's not a lot of information about this pen. It is. I'm probably going to make a mess of the pronunciation. The Venvestas. Venvstas, V A V E N V S T A S. It's a company based in Paris. They make fountain pens and other writing implements. It is the Venvstas Dart. Now it's stylized. It is the Dart because it is quite a pointy pen, um, and it is D apostrophe A R T Dart. Whether that's something to do with the dart shape or something to do with art, I don't know. It's their take on um, take on the uh, wordplay, if you like. It's an interesting pen. I've never come across anything like this. Um, it is really quite unique, and there's a lot that I really, really do like about it. I'm um, quite happy with this purchase. I bought this on pre-order. Um, way back in February 2018. I saw a post on the Venvestas Facebook uh, page and they said that they were going to be um, making this pen very soon, early 2018, and, um, and releasing it shortly thereafter. I was interested because it is quite a unique looking pen. No other fountain pen looks like this. Recently on this channel I've reviewed quite a lot of Chinese fountain pens which could be construed as being a bit of a um, rip-off of other manufacturers such as uh, Lamy or Twisby. Um, this isn't. This is a, I believe, made in France pen, French made pen, and um, it is quite unique. There's nothing quite like it. Difficult to tell which end's which. It's fairly easy once you get, to you get used to it, but you know, it doesn't look like anything in particular. It doesn't even look like a pen really. So, I'll tell you all about this pen and what I actually think of it because there are some things that I really really like and there's one or two issues which I really really don't like. So we'll get onto those later in the video and do a writing sample. Um, I got interested in buying one of these mainly because on the Facebook page it said it was going to be sort of coming soon, pre-order. And then I noticed a post from one of the guys who works there, in, I think it was one of the fountain pen pages on the, or groups on Facebook. Don't ask me which one because there's so many and they all have the same name. They're all fountain pen something, fountain pen buy and sell, fountain pens, stuff like that. So. No idea where it actually was, I can't find the original post, but he did say that they were going to do a special order price on the Venvas Staffs Dart. I had a look at their website and I was also intrigued and in fact compelled to buy this pen for one simple reason. Venvas Staffs want this to compete with the Lamy Safari. Big, big news. Somebody's going to take on the Lamy Safari. Mass produced pen. It's been popular since the 80s. All plastic. Mass produced in Lamy, uh, Lamy's factory in Germany. Um, Google Pens have got a very good video about the production of uh, Lamy pens, which includes the Safari. Well worth seeking um, that, uh, that, pen out, that uh, video out on Google Pens. But then for Stas want to compete with the Lamy Safari with this pen. Clearly it's not a rip-off. It looks absolutely nothing at all like the Lamy Safari or indeed any other fountain pen I've ever seen. Um, it's a bold step for any company to go, you know what, we're going to take on the Lamy Safari, we want to provide customers with an alternative and then Stas are going down the route with this pen, apparently. Now, yes, it's all plastic. Yes, it's about the same price as the Lamy Safari. Um, 
it has some advantages, and those advantages are the sort of things which make me go, you know what, I'm going to try one of these, because it gets away from the whole proprietary cartridge and proprietary, co co proprietary converter issue. This, the Venvestas Dart, will take standard international cartridges, short and long, and it will also take standard international cartridge converters. And strangely, and I haven't tried this, but apparently, according to them, the Venvestas website, it will also take Lamy cartridges. So whatever aperture they've made into built into the, um, the feed that's in the section, will take two different, if you like, adapters uh, for the standard international and Lamy cartridges. And I also guess the converters as well from Lamy. So from that one point, yes, this is definitely going to be a bit of a competitor to the Lamy Safari. Will it match it? I doubt it. I'm not a fan, personally I'm not a fan of the Lamy Safari. I don't like the style. It's one of those pens where I can understand why it's popular. From what I can tell, it writes well. The closest I've ever come to it, I have a Lamy Safari, which is the 2017 special edition uh, teal colour, which is still in its box, and it will remain so because I bought that pen purely as it was the start. 2017 was the start of my fountain pen journey. I wanted a teal coloured Lamy Safari because it was a special edition. I love the colour teal. Uh, I just thought, you know what, I've got no intention of writing with this pen, it's not for me, but I want it, so I'll keep it in the box, look at it many years from now and go, yeah, this is where my journey, journey started. So I can understand why the Lamy Safari is popular, apparently it writes almost perfectly out of the box for most people, the quality control is good, every pen is tested, this pen is also tested. Um, it's all plastic, it's cheap, all the rest of it. A lot going for it. It's a good everyday carry pocket pen, uh, not pocket pen, but everyday carry pen, solid writer, and everything else. So, to pre try and take on that market with a uh, another plastic pen from a what I believe is a fairly unknown uh, French company, uh, they do have quite a range of pens. If you go to the Vendestas website, they've got quite a lot of pens which all have quite a similar design aesthetic in the fact that they have angled, uh, usually angled um, uh, if you like cuts to where the uh, cap goes onto the barrel and the feed is also angled. So you, you do get a little bit of a cross style, a, well, I don't know whether you want to call it a company design perspective or something like that. Um, so they do have their own design language. I'm not entirely sure whether this takes it to the next level because this is, in, is an incredibly angular pen. I mean, it really is. I'll show you some close-up um, uh, video of this when I've finished talking about it. And you'll see what I mean. I mean, it really is. I mean, it is not like the Lamy Safari at all. This is a very, very alternative pen. So if you don't want to be stuck in the 80s um, with the Lamy Safari design, could go quite radical and get one of these. Is it worth it? Well, there are some caveats. It is an interesting pen, definitely. And I'll go through the various parts of the pen in a minute. I bought this on a pre-order um, from Ben Vestas, their website, directly. Um, they didn't give me any time scale as to as and when this pen was going to be produced. They didn't send out an email saying it could be many weeks because they were still going through the, the manufacturing process. They didn't know what the demand was going to be like. And also this pen on the website was listed as coming with a pen stand. Now it's got a cap, don't need a pen stand, but I think that the design language, the styling of this pen was so unique and interesting. I thought, you know, what the hell? I mean, it didn't even tell you how much the pen stand was, but it, it, it was, Less than, less than about 8 euros, something like that. Um, 
So I thought I'll add that to the uh, to the package. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got an email from Venvestas saying that the pen was hoping to be dispatched very soon. The so the demand outstrips supply, and they can't keep up with the manufacturing, which is either good or bad because they're never going to be able to keep up with the Lama Safari if it was that popular. Because uh, because uh, you know scales of uh, economies of scale and all that. Um, so they also said that the pen would be dispatched from France, I believe it actually came from Germany, um, very soon, I got it about a week and a half later, something like that, and that there would be no pen stand because they hadn't quite got through all the, um, all the manufacturing process on the pen stand. So I'm guessing that was a little bit of an afterthought. Um, Still no idea what the pen stand will look like, but from the email, from what I can gather, it sounds like it may or may not even be manufactured. Uh, if it isn't manufactured, match, uh, manufactured, they said that they will refund that part of uh, the money. So, anyway, pre-ordered price, very, very cheap. I um, can't remember how much it was exactly, including the pen stand and, and including postage, I believe it was in the region of something like 38 euros. It's quite a lot of stuff for that money. Um, and it is unique. Definitely nothing else like it on the market. I believe that the price, according to their website yesterday when I checked, just for this pen is now 43 euros. It's a special introductory price. So the price is increasing. And they're going to have to be a little bit careful because if they're not if they're not too careful, it's going to end up being quite a little bit more than the Lamy Safari, um, which obviously if you're trying to compete compete with something um, like that, you don't want to make it more expensive because people are going to go, it's tried, it's tested, we'll buy a Lamy Safari. So let's talk about the pen. Um, I'm going to go through the dimensions uh, and weights in a minute. For the uh, close-ups of the various parts of the pen. But I'll just say it's all plastic, apart from the steel nib, and it weighs, oh, where's my thing, there we go, there's my note, 15 grams, very light pen. It certainly looks like it should be heavier because of the finish, and we'll go through this in a minute, so I'll just change my viewing angle. Right, so, here we go. Time to have a closer look at the Venvestas Dart. Um, it is all plastic. This is the black version. I can't remember um, if there are, are any other colour variants. I don't think that, uh, that there are. And as you can see, I mean, it is quite an unusual shape. There's the underside. There's the top, so very angular. Take a look at it. I mean, on the top, I feel that. Firstly, let's talk about the finish. Let's get this in focus here. The finish is like a. Um, oh, it's almost like a cast iron or um, hammered. Metal, I'd say it's more like a cast iron finish. Ignore the reflection here, I mean, it's because I've got the light on. Just turn that off a minute. And the artificial light, I mean, it's, it's not a metallic finish at all. So don't uh, don't think it is. It is a very matte black finish. Um, it is quite textured. It feels quite rough. I mean, at first I was a little bit impressed with this because I did think, "Oh, is this going to be um, a little bit similar to uh, to the feel of the uh, Visconti Homo sapiens, uh, the lava on that pen, the lava resin?" Um, no, it isn't. It, it feels like slightly rough textured plastic. Um, yeah, very very unusual design. Let me just uh, talk about. Hold on a minute. What you get in the pack. Now, I got this in a. It 
came in a jiffy envelope from Germany in this triangular box, but like a Toblerone box, which of course didn't hold up too well to um, being in a jiffy bag all the way from Germany, so it got a bit squished, but no big deal, you know, I'm not too fussed. It's a very, very sort of plain, cheap cardboard box, triangular pen box, um, nothing about it, you've got the company logo, Venvstas, and then Dot on the back. On this side, you can see that there are three categories of nib, uh, three sizes, extra fine, fine and medium, I chose the fine. Um, basically it tells you it's a fountain pen, and that it is designed and handcrafted in Paris, France. And there's the company email address and website, venvastas.com. Um, yeah, it is what it is. There's nothing really great about the box. So, anyway, also came with this rather um, useful little uh, instruction card. So, basically saying thank you very much for buying it. Please read the instructions to be able to use the correct functioning of your dart. Um, it's been made as an everyday pen with an avant-garde design. Yeah, I can, <laughs> can't disagree with that. It utilises standard European short stroke long cartridges or converters, which are the most common on the market. It also comes with a cartridge converter included, I must add. Um, it's been designed following ergonomic principles. I've got a question about that later. Uh, with a unique look, few pens can match. With a very innovative, open-close system that will make easier your everyday tasks. That's all that bit down there. Hmm. It will make easier my everyday tasks. Well, I've got a little bit of an issue about that one as well. So, the dart is made in sturdy plastic with a lacquered semi-gloss finish. It's not lacquered. I can safely tell you this is made from a single, well, each element, cap, section, barrel, is made from what I can gather to be a injection moulded bit of plastic. Um, you can even see up here at the very top, it's a little bit rough around the edges. Now I'm thinking it could be partly due to the finish, because it is quite a rugged rough finish and they haven't quite got this end portion I mean there is it's almost a sprue mark where it's been cut off or something there so it's a little bit rough and ready just a tiny amount not enough to moan but you know it's not a lacquered finish it's the same all the way through you open up open up this pen and it's the same on the inside you'll see what it see what I mean in a minute so what else have we got on here? Uh, the cap and body are snap-off, so the friction fit, if you like. Uh, loaded weight is approximately 15 grams. The nib system is 5 millimeters in stainless steel as standard, and a pen rest is offered an, as an option. So I'm guessing that the pen stand is going to be a pen rest. Uh, what else have we got on here? An ink converter is con included, or if not, a set of cartridges. So I got a converter included with this, so I'm guessing you may or may not get cartridges included with it. For cleaning, just wash, wash the section with warm water and soap. Do not use any solvents or aggressive chemical products as they may damage the lacquer. Well, obviously, yeah. Start using acetone or something on plastic, it's going to eat into it. Um, it also lists the parts of the pen. So you've got the cap and the barrel. I'm starting to see what the design is all about. And there is also the ink converter, and then it tells you a bit about the nibs. So it's a protected design right down there at the bottom. Nothing more to really say about that leaflet. So, 
Let's go over the pen. Yeah, which end is which? It's not always obvious the first thing, but once you figure out that there is, sl there, it does taper towards the nib. And the cap is a little bit wider down there than it is at the bottom end of the barrel. It is quite an angular design. Everywhere you look, there are angles. Even where the cap and the section joins the barrel there, the cutouts are angular. On the bottom, once again, it's not even a flat bottom, there is quite a sharp angle, it's like a keel to the pen, more angles and more angles. Also, quite interestingly, interestingly, see the Venvestas logo there? The V, the stylized V. That is replicated in the cap. It's recessed in into the plastic on the cap. And also at the base of the barrel. So they have thought about putting their branding on this, which is quite good. So that is the pen as a whole. Let's talk about the uh, dimensions. Let's just get my notes back together. Do the writing sample a little bit later on. So it's got quite an irregular section. 13 millimeters to 16 millimeters. This is the section here. Very, very wide at the top. Quite um quite sort of flat. Well, if you know, no, not as wide as underneath. So top to bottom, not as wide as the top. So, 16 millimetres, that is quite a wide section. Um, let's see, what else have we got? The length, capped, is 15.5 centimetres. So, average sort of size. Uncapped is 14.3 centimetres. We'll talk about the capping. Remember when I said in the uh, in this little leaflet about... Uh, it comes with a very innovative open close system. Open close system that will make it make easier your everyday tasks. It's a pull off cap, friction fit, and if you can do this one handed, then oof, you win a prize. It is not easy. So here we go. Main business end of the pen. You can see the cap is just what I can only describe as being moulded, perhaps uh, milled out and, um, and tapped, maybe. It's not even tapped, I mean there's no screw in there. Uh, the cap only fits on one way because you can see how the angles fit together there. Um, so it's a single piece of plastic, nothing at all other than the design of the uh, the cap which fits into the section. So that is going into the section. It does clip into place. It's not a pronounced click and it's much easier to take off one hand uh, two handed. This finish that's on the uh, on the pen you can see it also, because it's the same material, it also extends down onto the bit that fits into the section. And that actually makes it a little bit difficult to push. Well, certainly to pull off. You can feel it really rubbing. So capping this pen is not, it's not the easiest. It's very secure, I mean that cap's not going to go anywhere. But it's not easy. There is also one other thing. Remember all of that is going, all of this part here, is going inside that section. So that whole area there is inside the barrel of the pen, and it goes back quite a way. And that has one major, major problem. When you fill this, using a cartridge converter in an ink bottle, you insert the nib into the ink, and you twist your cartridge converter and it draws it all up. That whole area inside there, 
I mean, okay, it doesn't exactly fill with ink because, I mean, it is angled, so only perhaps half of it does. But it's a huge ink pocket, if you like. That's going to trap ink. And trying to dab that out with a bit of tissue is not easy because you've got the round section, but then this hexagonal body, and it's quite tight trying to get bits of tissue all the way down into there to mop out all the bits of ink. So, yeah, watch out for that, because obviously if you just dip this into a bottle of ink, wipe off the nib, sooner or later that nib is going to, well, the whole section in fact, is going to end up with ink running down there, it's going to drip out of the pen. So, yeah, something to watch out for. As I mentioned earlier, this is the uh, fine nib, stainless steel nib, and... You can see the feed underneath. All plastic feed, stainless steel nib. I'm guessing these nibs do also swap out quite easily. So, there we go. We have got quite an aggressively angled pen. Aggressively angled section. It's quite unusual. Never really seen anything quite like that. Also, this pen does not post. There is, I mean, there just isn't anywhere for this cap to post onto. So, if you like posting your pen, this pen will not post. Um, let's take apart the barrel. So this this area here, I don't know whether, there we go, you can see the angle, this is the section. So it all comes apart, just slides off very much like the cap. So we've got a big bit at the back come on focus there we go big bit at the back which slides into the section there and this section has a push in cartridge converter this one was supplied with it as you can see I've used this quite a lot already I've done an extensive amount of writing with this pen to really try it out um, and that just pushes onto the back now just one other word of warning all plastic pen there's going to be a temptation, people always seem to ask something I'm always going to uh, think about. Is this eyedropperable? Well, for a start, I'd want to probably wash out that, uh, that barrel because there seems to be quite a lot of plastic um, dust inside there. So that is something. Um, but the way that this area goes into the section can you see it's all that te same, same textured finish so that is very uneven quite rough finish so eyedropperability no you're never going to be able to get a seal in the gap there and all of that finish against the other bits of plastic is going to create all sorts of tiny little channels where the ink can flow out of so if you fill this with ink I can pretty fill the barrel with ink, I can pretty much guarantee it will all start spilling out of this gap here at some point. So, no, it won't eyedropper. If you can find a way of doing it, then, yeah, fine. <laughs> but I should imagine that's going to take an awful lot of silicone sealant. It might be a bit hit and miss. Not really reliable. So, there's the pen. Obviously, it's never going to roll away because it is quite angled. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's definitely got quite a lot of shape to it. Let's, uh, let's go on to, um, to one other thing before I move over to the writing sample. Let's move this over here. So, the first thing that I'm going to say is uncapping it the section. Where is the section? The feed extends out of the gap down there so you basically have to hold what is the barrel. The barrel is the section I mean you can't hold it down here, it's sharp corners, it's not good. So you hold the pen, I mean yes you could, you could theoretically hold it further up but that's not my style that far up I can't get a good grip on the pen. It's impossible. It really, really is difficult. And the only way I can possibly sort of 
suggests is to hold these top two edges between thumb and forefinger like that and grip onto that and rest the bottom keel, that angle keel of your pen onto this joint of your finger there and that is about the only way you can write with it. Now I know a lot of people complain about the Lamy Safari where uh, people say well, I don't like the fact it's dictating where I should grip the pen it doesn't suit my grip this is competing with the Lamy Safari and it's almost as if they forgot to design the fact that the pen has to be held in the hand I don't know how they've managed to do that but there is no comfortable way of holding it it just rocks from one side to the other the only way you can really hold it is to really apply pressure to these two sharp corners, upper corners, um, when you're writing, I mean, the keel at the bottom, because you're applying so much pressure up here, you're actually gripping the pen like this. You can forget about the rest of your hand. It's just something to rest on. You're holding the pen like this, basically gripping and gripping, writing like that. And what it does, it leaves you with great dents in your finger and your thumb. So, ergonomically... And this is what they said. It's got an avant-garde design, and... Where is it? Yes, it has been designed following ergonomic principles. There we go. I don't know... I mean, this is a very alien-looking pen. Maybe it was actually designed for an alien to use, because it's certainly not designed for the human hand to hold in a normal pen way. The section at the top here, in the barrel, where you hold the pen, 16 millimeters across, so that is really, really quite wide. And the only place that there really is to hold it is, you know, I mean, you, you, I can't write like that, I can't hold it on top, that's really, really weird. You can't hold it below, you can, but once again, that's really, really weird. You want to surround the barrel and the section with your fingers and, and write with it somewhat like this but I mean you can see every way you try to touch and hold I mean you can see how much pressure you end up putting on there white uh, fingers are going white when you squeeze it it's not an easy pen to hold I'd really really recommend this as an everyday carry pen because it will certainly be a talking point, it's very very different I should imagine it's going to be incredibly durable, I mean this is not cheap plastic, this is I mean it's not thick plastic but it is well made I mean this, this is, yeah, this is a good pen for that, but extensive writing is going to be really uncomfortable, I mean I've written pages with this over the last um, 24 hours and I like the pen a lot, I really really do but holding it, I mean, ugh, no, it's, it's not painful, but my God, it's awkward. I even tried, if you rotate the pen, so that rather than holding the pen like this, you rotate it, so suddenly the angles are actually, the facets, if you like, are actually wet naturally where your fingers lie, so the pen is now, the nib is now rotated through... I don't know what that is. I'll try and sort of give a rough estimate of the angle there. I don't know, 20 degrees maybe, 30, something like that. It's a 30 degree angle. So you're now writing with the nib not straight down onto the paper as it should be written, but at an angle. And believe it or not, it actually writes, the, it, it's a good nib, it's a well designed pen, and it will actually write like that. But it doesn't feel right, and it's not the normal way of writing with a fountain pen, so it wasn't designed to be written with like that either. Um, I will say one other thing. Reverse writing is a lot more comfortable, because you've immediately reduced the diameter of the grip here, and you've got a big flat, well, apart from the slight um, apex there, big flat area, that just simply rests on your pen. So reverse writing with this pen is really comfortable, but it's not great. Uh, reverse writing, um, I'm never a fan of it with any pen, 
uh, it will this pen will do it quite well um, so let's just go straight into the writing sample now because I think this is going to be an important thing to prove I'm going to sit down for this so I shall try and keep everything in the view of the pen. there we go yeah should be able to write fairly comfortably like that so the pen is the just get it going no hard starts by the way the venom of the stats got the um before I go too much further into this, the ink, people tend to know, like to know what I'm writing with. This is just Waterman Intense Black. So, writing sample. Let's get this. There we go. Right, okay. Yeah, this is a fine nib. It's um, certainly one of the better fine nibs that I've actually used. Um, certainly on my fountain pen journey, I've got quite a few fine uh, nibs in my um, fountain pens. It's I'm, I've never been a massive fan of fine nibs, but I do find that they're very useful at work because uh, writing on cheap paper, which I do almost entirely, I certainly don't have uh, access to things like Rhodia pads at work. So I need a fine nib to be able to uh, to write effectively. Um, it also allows me to write quite small. So I can write tiny text if I like with a fine nib, and it's still legible, which is great. So I'm quite happy with uh, with fine nibs for that uh, that particular reason. Um, Yeah, it's a wet writer. I, um, I really, really, really do like the way that this pen writes. It's nice and wet, um, but with it, without it being problematically wet, I've got no issues with the feed keeping up. Um, it just writes and writes and writes. Uh, it's a very, very effective, well-designed writing implement, apart from the section. So that is my only real gripe with it. Um, I love the way that the nib writes. I mean, it writes with very, well, no pressure, basically. There we go. Perfectly tuned nib. And when I sort of think back about how, like, say, for example, the Conklin Durograph, which I paid, perhaps even, I actually paid a lot more for the Conklin Durograph, and it's always recommended as an entry-level uh, fountain pen um, and that thing just does not write I think the company that manufactures them or the nibs certainly um, needs to look at their quality control procedures and, um, and work out why, why they can sell pens which don't write properly if at all um, Venvastas I'm really impressed with this, uh, this pen I uh, took it apart when I first got it and had a look inside and decided to give the uh, the whole nib and feed a bit of a flush through and there was a tiny amount of blue ink in the cartridge uh, in, in the um, cartridge converter thought, oh it's been tested and it had also been washed out so they've basically done exactly what Lamy do and test their pens before sending them out and I think that that's really, really important. If you're selling a pen which you want people to actually like and think is good quality, if you don't test your pens, or you test very few of them, um, how can you ever expect people to uh, to really like them? So, this 
is a real, real plus. Um, I'm very happy with that. So, a bit of line variation. I find this nib very, very, very stiff. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is, this is a very stiff nib. There is no flex whatsoever. Writes well in every direction, which is more than I can say for quite a lot of uh, cheap fountain pens, or perhaps even the more expensive ones. Um, this is a really, really nice pen to write with. It's for a fine. It's smooth. As, I mean, there's no scratchiness. It requires no effort to write. And this is where this pen wins because. As much as I can moan about the section being uncomfortable and really difficult, awkward to hold, whatever, the nib is well tuned and it writes really well. So if you don't want to apply any pressure to either side of the uh, of the section, it will still write. So you have got a nice pen to write with. It it, it it's a good pen. I'm really really pleased with it. So as far as favourite pens go, it's certainly the most unusual uh, design or shape of pen that I've got and I really really like it I think it's um, it's quite uh, commendable of Venvastas to test their pens in the same way that Lamy does um, and I like the design I, I think it is actually it's, it's not just something that I actually like it grew on me at first I thought, oh, you know, it's quite an unusual design, mm, plasticky, plastic finish is a bit rough, you know, the section's a bit thick, but it's really grown on me, I really, really do like this pen, um, so, yes, I'm not saying it's for everybody, the design style is quite out there, um, the section is awkward to hold, no doubt about it, so that is one reason which people might go, mm, it's not for me, um, but it writes really well. It's been tested. The nib's good quality. No issues at all with flow. I really like the pen. So I would recommend, if you're intrigued by the design, try it out. Because this is not the sort of pen you're going to see every day. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you enjoyed this video of the Vendestas Dart. Um, I do upload videos fairly regularly to YouTube, uh, fountain pen reviews and videos about fountain pens and using fountain pens. So if you are interested in watching my fountain pen journey and discovering how I progress through this uh, this whole journey of different pens and inks, uh, I would certainly request if you would like to, uh, click on the subscribe button and then you can follow uh, my fountain pen journey because it's ever changing, this is a very new thing for me and I really enjoy using fountain pens and this is quite honestly one of the more interesting things I've come across so I'm really pleased with this pen I can't give it a rating out of 10 because it is going to be one of those things where some people like it, some people don't so thank you for watching and I hope to uh, see you back on my channel for more fountain pen stuff very soon Thanks a lot. Bye.